happy to be here today. <laughs> uh, at first, uh, when I was asked to come here and found that the <clears throat> it was called Meet the Artist, I was kind of scared, really, because it's true, I've been a professional photographer all my life. I started photography school in 1969 and quit there in 1971. And ever since, I've been working every day, almost, as a professional photographer. And I've done many various kinds of jobs, really. Uh, I started as a portrait photographer, the old school traditional studio portrait photography, because that, that was what was uh, available to me as a young photographer. And uh, for a while I worked as a commercial photographer in the, the city of Borås in Sweden, which is the center of mail order companies. And they do lots of catalogs, mail order catalogs. This was in the 70s. And uh, I was doing uh, uh, lots and lots and lots of pictures for catalogs then. And um, after that I had my own business for a while, for 10 years doing portraiture, industrial photography, some commercials. And um, uh, after 10 years, I had to go further, both for myself and, and to, not to drown in that swamp of, of, the, of the photography. So I moved to another town in Sweden called Eskilstuna, which is about 100 kilometers west of Stockholm, where I worked as a medical photographer, which was something entirely different. And as a medical photographer, you take pictures of visible diseases, mainly. And this was a highly productive department at that hospital. We were two photographers, and we produced around 40,000 picture units a year on two photographers. So we were quite busy, I promise you. We did all our black and white work, and that is too loud. And we did all our black and white uh, jobs ourselves, and we also I initiated processing of E6 color print, uh, slide print uh, processing. And I also had the time to start a video department at that hospital and for that county, and I produced around 15 video films on various topics for education, for documenting diseases and, and conditions and procedures. Um, a year. So it was quite a busy place. I also worked in, in Uppsala at, at the University Hospital of Uppsala for about four years. And in uh, 2003, we moved to Småland, to the south of Sweden, where I had nothing to do, actually. My wife was uh, occupied at, at the university, and I started my own business again started doing portraiture and came into the um, to doing um, commercial work again specializing in taking pictures of gold objects like uh, rings and, and jewelry and when i was asked to do that i can tell you i have been doing like surgical instruments and such for many years so i said okay i'll do that no problem at all the problem it was it appeared that I knew nothing about taking pictures of high shiny gold objects. And there was no knowledge at all to find among colleagues because the colleagues who had found the key to how to do that, they wouldn't even look at me when I asked them. They said, okay, go ahead. So I had to find out myself. And I, I, I found one Friday afternoon with a cinnamon bun in my hand actually and a cup of coffee before me, and the la last picture I had shot on the computer screen, and I, I realized I can't do this. It, it's impossible. I had no way of finding out how to do this after all my years working professionally. And then just, I just came to me, just an idea. If I swap the lights, just turn it around, and I tripped the shutter and the picture came up on the screen and there it was. So after some adjustments and six years later, 
I was still working with that. And um, that was really interesting. But if you want to go into gold photography, I promise you, you will have a heck of a job finding out how. I can tell you. Anyway, I retired around 2013, 2014 perhaps. I don't know really because I took some, some assignments after that. But I, I wanted to do what I wanted the most and to see, look at what I had been doing because besides doing professional photography, I had shot pictures with my camera always on my, on my shoulder, traveling, walking around, but I had never had the time or the energy to print the pictures. It was mainly black and white. There are some, I don't know, perhaps 15,000 color slides at home that I've been looking at in projector, but, but I didn't really want to know what I was doing, actually. So I started printing, and I started scanning above all, I started organizing my pictures to see what have I been doing? Is it worth anything? Shall I throw it away or shall I go on to find my area to find out what am I doing? And I found that there were some lines that I've been shooting over and over again during the years. <clears throat> and I wanted to, to see that really, so I, I asked the people in, 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 the, in the art hall at home if I could have an exhibition to show to, show to myself what have I been doing, actually, all these years. And they looked at my pictures on the computer and as prints, and they said, yes, of course, of course, you have lots there. So I started printing, and I printed, and I printed, and I printed and laid out and found that I, I had around 40 pictures for my first uh, exhibition for myself. And then from there on, I've continued to work with my own pictures and it's taken another way, of course. I've found uh, ways to express myself and it's become more and more uh, abstract and um, I don't consider myself today as a documentary photographer, but I'm open to a discussion about what is documentary and what is fiction in photography. I listened to a very interesting podcast with a girl called Jennifer something, funny German, um, that I found very interesting because she's a different generation than I am. Uh, where she creates pictures, she, she stages them, and I found that that is um, a new way of using photography to express yourself. I'm more of what you would call a street photographer. I, I gather, I collect pictures of what I see, and then I organize them into my different files where I have my different subjects of pictures. So I. I forgot to take a picture, it's so clear to me, I forgot to take a picture and bring to you of how I organize things. <clears throat> but I use uh, iPhoto a lot to put them into different albums and, and uh, there it, it becomes more and more clear to me what I'm doing, actually. My pictures are kind of funny more and more and when I have them on the wall, People come up to me and say, oh, that's beautiful, but what is it? And that's, I don't think that's interesting, actually, where I took the picture or what, what I used as a, as a basic material to do my pictures. It's not really interesting. The only thing that's interesting is, do you like the picture or do you don't? If you don't like it, okay, fine, take a look at next, and if you don't like it, go home. If you like it, you're welcome to buy it or look more at it or so on. So I, <laughs> I took a quote from the great photographer Aaron Siskin. I don't know how many of you who know heard about Aaron Siskin. He died in the 90s and he was uh, um, very much influenced by, by the abstract uh, impressionism, uh, expressionism, um, and he had an answer to that. I, I have taken that to me. 
He said, when people ask what it is, this is a, it's a picture, he says. And what can you add? So that's what I say too. If you want to ask me what it is, it's a picture. <clears throat> In the 1970s, when I started as a professional photographer, there was really nothing as artists among photographers. They, uh, either you were a portrait photographer working in a studio, employed by someone, or you were an industrial or commercial doing mail order catalogs or whatever. But I was really interested, and I had seen some pictures somewhere in some photo magazine. And I remember in 1973, around that, I, I knew that there was a school in Germany, in Essen, run by Otto Steinert. And some Swedish photographers had been there. And I, I thought they did something entirely different. I wrote to Otto Steinert, the Folkbank School in Essen, <clears throat> and used my best school German, really. I never got any reply from them. But I got a um, subscription for this Swiss magazine, Camera. And I had that one for well up into the 80s something, where, 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 when it was closed. And uh, that was a great source of inspiration <coughs> to, me, to me, because I noticed that there is something more than just assignments. There is a way to make pictures that are considered as art, which they weren't in Sweden at that time. So I, I still have all the issues of camera magazine. And that's where I discovered Joseph Sadek, among many others, were there. It's, it's, a, it's a pity it's not avail available anymore. So I, I started to do my, my experimentation. And, and this was in the summer of 1973. I took my Lenov camera out in the, in the late night to take a picture which consisted of just a composition. It's a barrel, okay, yeah. But I wanted to do something that was just um, elements of, of um, gray and white and, and black to make a graphic pattern. And I also took pictures of what I saw while walking around. I saw a door while walking to my job at the portrait studio, and I passed this door every day, twice a day, and after a while I took my camera and took a picture of the two hands. And uh, this was one of the subjects I will come back to many times later. Traces of human activity. I also experimented a lot with um, geometric patterns to see if I could find them, and if I could use how they would uh, be used and how they would appear in pictures. And I also started really early to take pictures of lonely trees, because that's been a follower to me, looking at myself very much as a lonely tree. And I've also been very fascinated about the world underwater. I've been a scuba diver for some years, and uh, the quiet and the silence underwater, uh, I'm very comfortable being by water. I like being on or underwater, and I think to myself, perhaps that's because we came from water that I feel that comfortable. So I have lots of pictures connected with the water. <coughs> and this, this series I shot uh, was, um, gave me a feeling of being underwater, actually. And this picture is related to the other with the bridge, in that I more and more, now we're after 2003, this is around 2004 or so, I started to look at and to find geometrical patterns that could stand for themselves. But this, this is still not an abstraction. I think this is 
pretty concrete. It's, it's, you can say what it is if you look at it. And I also found, looking in the magazines, I found Joseph Sadek, and I guess you know about Joseph Sadek, all of you, the Czech photographer, with these green pictures. And isn't that what we do? All we remember, we have memories, and they are not very sharp, they are faint, and you remember some parts of something, a part of something you experienced, in the past. So I got the opportunity to borrow uh, an image lens and uh, did some, some experiments with it. Well, if you're Swedish, you're supposed to be very interested and very close to nature. And all Swedes go out in the woods, and that is the optimum if you're Swedish, you should be part of the woods almost. I'm not very comfortable in the woods. Uh, but sometimes I've taken my camera out to see what, what it's like in the woods. And uh, well, it's a lot of trees and they're standing there saying nothing. But sometimes when it's misty, it can be quite beautiful actually. So these are part of my experiments with <coughs> And so I found this effect of reflection in water and um, a kind of geometry and uh, repeated shapes and repeated lines. And I've been working with that as much as I can, actually. And again, I'm very comfortable with being near water. So, after more and more printing, I found that I shall work with that and try and find compositions which are can work as a picture on the wall. And um, I, I can hang this picture on the wall and have it hanging there. And it gives me kind of peace, actually. It's the, the repeated forms, the diagonal composition, and it doesn't really mean anything. You, you can ask what it is, and this is typically, this is a picture, just take it or leave it. And this is from the same uh, philosophy. Also this. And there is also this that man makes things. We make things and we destroy them. We make them, we destroy them, and we fix them and we destroy them. And that is what we do with nature too. With the environment, everything. We have a splendid technology. And that technology is now threatening to destroy us. And that's what happened with these metal objects. And I, I like the, the, the shape, the, the texture of rust. And uh, I often go back to, to take pictures of metals and rust. And so far I've been doing most black and white actually. But then came the digital cameras. And uh, <laughs> then you had color in the camera. And I lifted it up on the screen. And I have this problem, you know. I don't know if any one of you have this problem. But some people don't like music because it's just noise. My father was one of them. He couldn't stand music. I love music, I play music, I play guitar, and I play it really loud, and it's wonderful, I think. The louder, the better. But colors are a great problem, I, I tell you, it's, it's very difficult. I don't know what colors go together well. And then people ask me, how can you be a photographer without knowing about colors? And I reply, when I was taught photography, color wasn't that big. 
we, we, we shot slides and, and we were given assignments, take this and this and this and this. And we did that, we put them up and we put the sign around and shot the pictures. And um, they were colors or not, we didn't care. We, we, we knew, you all know, that if you put something white in the picture, it will draw your attention. So if you want to concentrate your, your vision, put white where you want to con concentrate. But then came digital, and I sat looking at these colored pictures and found that it's not that bad. You know, blue and yellow are the colors of the Swedish flag. I thought that's a good starting point. So that was in Paris a couple of years ago, I walked around with my little uh, digital camera and shot everything I could find about like this. And uh, I put them in my second exhibition, which was a couple of years ago, and the prints that sold were the color prints, surprisingly. I had perhaps 35, 40 black and white prints, and then I had five color prints, I think, five, six color prints, and all the color prints sold, none of the black and white ones. So um, I'm go I, I continue to gather color pictures and I try to sort them in for my inner vision and try to find out what, what is it that attracts me. And then doing that, I started to find graffiti also. And I started to find patterns. And um, I have lots of pictures of this wall. And to me, they are like sea charts, like, you know, like land, like a map with the sea and the land and the different bays and places you can go with your boat. Again, water. Uh, you can go sailing here, it's difficult, but, but you can do it. I, I can see it in, on the screen and follow it and, and imagine myself what's in there, perhaps a dragon or something. Or some enemies with swords and shields and everything. And then I found this one somewhere. And at that exhibition where I sold the, the color prints, this was number one. It was right inside the door. And I stood there looking, people coming and watching the exhibition, and all stopped by this one. There were lots of people standing there, and they asked me, what is it? It's a picture, I said. <laughs> but what can, what can it be? To me, it's almost like a thought, a bubble, a, what's that called in English? A bubble above your head where your thoughts are. Yeah. And uh, well, there was a lot of discussions about it. You're welcome to ask me questions. I'm happy to ask questions. But surprisingly, no one bought this picture. But it's beautiful on the wall. And I've continued to search and now I think I can say I'm a street photographer, really. I, I go around and look for pictures everywhere. And I found traces of human activity everywhere. And sometimes I make them black and white, and sometimes I make them color. And there are fun, funny things happening everywhere. We've been walking around Geneva today, this morning, and uh, I don't know how much, I, I finished one battery in my camera. So you're happy living in this town. I think there's a lot to take pictures, I like. And again, traces of human activity. What, what does it say? Why was it written? Who was Granny? Is that her lips up there? Why did she kiss the wall? And sometimes I find motifs that's been there all the time. I visited my daughter, she lives in Hatfield in England, and we had 
an errand to her job. And we drove up to her parking lot and stopped the car and I stepped out and took this picture about five meters from her car, right in front of her car. And she went in to do her business and I, I stopped her. And then she came to see my exhibition and she walked around and she said, where is that, what 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 is that? Oh, you know what that is, I said. It's You've seen it thousands of times. You see it 250 times a year. No, I never seen that, you see. That's right in front of your car. That's where you put your car every day. And I think that is, it's often like that with pictures that you haven't noticed. They are there, but you haven't noticed. And I, I think it's kind of a mission for me to, to lift out things that you haven't seen and, and show them to you and see that there, there's a lot of beauty in them. And I have a passion for lines that are going this way and that way and make compositions. This one is from Marrakesh, actually. And this is the line series also. And this one has caused a lot of discussions. What is this? Is it big? Is it small? What kind of material is it? Is it skin? Well, I've been working in the operating theaters many times and uh, watched and taken pictures of operations on the guts. And they sometimes look like this, actually, in some. And, uh, but it isn't. It's a picture. <laughs> and there are lines every. If your passion is lines, you can find them everywhere, I promise you. You don't need much to make a picture. And then we came back to the hands. The hands have now become color prints, color pictures, and traces of human activity. Someone put his hand there, her hand, and even bothered to make it blue because I haven't manipulated it. Who was that and why? There was nothing else that was blue on that wall. It was just rust and rust and rust and then the blue hand. Why? And this is where I am now. I'm in the recycling business. I'm fascinated by graffiti. And it's, a, it's everywhere. We went to Italy a couple of weeks ago. There was graffiti all over on, on car, cars, on train cars, and, and everywhere. And mostly, I think they are quite ugly, actually. But if you go into detail, you can reuse it and use only tiny little parts of it that perhaps the artist didn't see, or that's not significant for the picture. I, I reuse it, and I, I take parts of it, and I make pictures of it. And um, that brings also the question of, is, is this a, a, a duplicate? Is this, have I used something that I'm not allowed to use? I think every time you trip the shutter of a camera, you take pictures of something that's already been used. And um, as long as it's around, I think it's, it's OK to make your own interpretation of it. And I found, find great pleasure in, in uh, looking at details, trying to find whatever in, in, in them, whatever there is to find. So, and that's my pictures. Thank you so much, Rolf. Thank, Thank you. you so much you. for sharing your for coming. Thank you students, thank you staff, thank you faculty. It's a good uh, thank you guest, external guest.